that. And then that. There you go. Go for it. All right. Good evening, everybody. Just a quick reminder if you are in Zoom land, make sure to stay on and finish the quiz at the very end. Otherwise, we don't know that you were here. Now, before I get started, I want to give a shameless plug. We are having our party all day tomorrow, also what we call our Patient Appreciation Day. So if you were able to come by, just pop in and say hi. We'd love to see you. Otherwise, come in and get your adjustment as well. And if you know of anybody else, let them know. We'd love to have them come in just to check to see that they're getting the same care that you did. Now, on that note, tonight's topic is on arthritis. Now, most of us know we've heard that term. We know a lot about it. But the question is, do we know that you can actually do something to help with that? Can we actually reverse that? That's a great question that we should be asking. What can we do on that? So in these brief 30 minutes, listen closely. Then you might have more questions afterwards. That's okay. Definitely write that down, and I'll make sure that I'll ask what's something that you had a question on that we can learn together from, or what was a takeaway that you had. So on that note, I will be stepping to the side, letting Dr. Steve take over so we can maximize the most time that we have together tonight. Thank you, Dr. Sam. All right. So some of you may remember that I, we used to actually fill this room up with 35 people. That's why we, only, we have 35 chairs. So I love the fact that more people are showing up in person because when we show up in person and we show up in community, we have an opportunity to actually grow together instead of trying to grow individually, which obviously if we go together, we get a lot further. So in my uh, morning routine, one of the things I do is I listen to audios of certain people. And today was by Leo Buscalia. Does that sound familiar to anybody? That's okay. So look him up later on. But he talks a lot about the power of love and connection and community. And one of the things that he talked about today um, was the idea of, he asked a guru the difference between heaven and hell. So I think we're pretty clear. We understand what my worldview is and most of the team. If you share a different one, we don't judge you. That's okay. But the difference between heaven and hell is in hell, they have a banquet full of food, like everything you could possibly imagine. And everyone is miserable because they all have four foot long forks. So everyone is starving. And he said, okay, well, what's the difference between heaven? He said, well, it's all exactly the same, except in heaven, they're helping each other. And everyone is perfectly happy. So one of the things that we love to do in building our community is it's really about helping each other out. Because when we go for our own, we're never going to go quite as far as we can. And that's why we do things like Dr. Sam, like the Patient Appreciation Day. It's really about helping build communities of the people who you want to be around to really understand what's possible with health. Because the fact is, we are going to talk about the idea of arthritis this evening, or as I like to call it, don't get rough around the edges. <laughs> Does anybody notice how some people, as they go through life, get a little rougher around the edges to keep it PR? <laughs> right? And probably it's because in some aspect of their life, they don't really feel all that great in their health. And most people, as we get older, we're taught in our culture that arthritis is a normal part of aging. Go back to that worldview thing that we talked about. I don't personally believe that we're created to live in a body that as we actually get wisdom to do things in life then breaks down so we can't do it. For me, that means that I think that we've missed the opportunity to learn how to properly care for ourselves. So tonight we're gonna to talk about these six different things. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on this point because I made slides for them. But we're gonna talk about what is it? Who do you know who suffers from it? That's one to keep in mind as Dr. Sam shared. We're about building communities of people really learning and taking opportunities to learn to be healthy. So if you know someone who suffers from arthritis, it would be a really good idea that they just simply get checked by a chiropractor, whether it's us or maybe they live somewhere else. We're gonna talk about the most common types, why it happens, what are the symptoms, and of course, the one that I'm sure you all wanna know about who have arthritis is, can it be fixed? If you went to your traditional doctor and asked this question, what's the answer you get when you have no, cure. no, no cure. It's normal. We can manage the symptoms, but we can't do anything to fix the actual problem. Well, I guess I'll give you the answer to that before we get there, but then we'll actually look at the research at the end. I have three or four different uh, peer reviewed research studies from the top journals on the planet that talk about this. That's just simply lack of information on your body. It's lack of knowing there's a difference. It's the confusion between common and normal. Just because it's common that people, as they get older, tend to have breakdown in their bodies and their health does not mean it's normal. But if we see it enough, then what's become common in our minds becomes the norm, even if it's not. It's like this silly conversation that's around the planet of truth. If it's truth, it's truth. It doesn't matter if your truth is different from my truth. The fact is, is gravity exists. 
or maybe it's something along the lines of, can we all agree that the earth has a certain shape to it? Mm -hmm. Like we're good in that yeah. in the room, right? And if I'm offending anybody, I'm sorry, you're allowed to have different beliefs. I'm not here to do that. We're about building what we believe together. And we know the truth is the earth is round or spherical. It is not flat. And just because someone may believe it's different doesn't mean that that's true. That's a conversation for a different day, but truth doesn't change based on our opinion if it's really the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is you were all created and we were all created and designed to be healthy. And the power that made your body is the same power that kills your body. We are anti-nothing in our office. We're pro that one fact. Because if we can come together on the one truth about health and how our bodies are supposed to work, then all those other things are minuscule in relation to whatever else might be going on. So as we dig in tonight, arthritis, the definition from the Mayo Clinic, so just to read it off, arthritis is inflammation of one or more joints causing pain and it worsens with age. Typically, medical treatment's goal is to reduce symptoms and improve quality of life. So the definition itself says what they think about arthritis. It worsens with age. It does worsen the longer it's there. I mean, which I guess means you're getting older at the same time. That's kind of how this works, right? <laughs> But any other chronic disease on the planet or chronic issue we have worsens the longer you have it, unless you choose to do something different about it. We're going to talk about some of that tonight. So what causes it is the most common cause or type of arthritis is called osteoarthritis. So that makes it about 80% of the arthritis on the planet. So show of hands, who knows someone who has osteoarthritis? If you know someone with arthritis, it's probably that. Sure, there's like rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis and a couple other versions of it, but 80 plus percent of arthritis on the planet is osteoarthritis, which means most of the people that we know who are suffering from it are probably suffering with the most common type. And it's caused by wear and tear of your joints throughout life. So if something is properly aligned and it works the way it's supposed to, does it wear out? It shouldn't. It shouldn't, right? If you have, this was last week too, so sorry people help. <laughs> I like to see faces. <laughs> so if you have a machine that you take proper maintenance of, then the things don't wear out as long as you're doing the proper maintenance. Well, our bodies are just a really complicated, intelligent machine. So if we do the things that need to be done to take care of it, then it's going to last a heck of a lot longer than most of us get it to last. I was on one of my uh, calls of some of the docs I coached today, and I kind of offhandedly made a comment about how when we're sitting here 50 years from now and working on coaching on his practice. And then I had the realization of how old I'm going to be in 50 years. I thought, <laughs> well, I really hope I can still do this and be as vibrant as I am because I'm going to make choices to get there when I'm somewhere around 90 years old, but who knows? But if we intentionally make choices to help build our health as opposed to deny our health. Um, another example before we go, because I like to tell stories. I think it helps people really get to things is uh, the lady at the supermarket where my wife does the grocery shopping most of the time, sometimes I get to go along for fun, but um, she's getting ready to retire. Super nice lady. Her goal when she retires in another two years is to literally sit and do nothing. And we've had multiple patients who have gone through that. So maybe that's someone's goal. But my question would be is, is that really worth all of the years you put into working to go home and sit and do nothing? No. And I bet no one's had that conversation. So next time I'm there, I'm going to poke at her a little bit and provoke her to maybe choose a higher level of health. Because the couple of people who come to mind, we had a police officer who, when he retired, he sat and did nothing and his health was terrible. He was in kidney failure for like six or seven years. Um, he passed away earlier this month. Um, we had another patient who was, um, I think she was also a police officer. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's the thing. Um, but she did the same thing. She worked for a ton of years, really, really, really hard. And she literally sat and did nothing for two years and her health went terrible. So if we do nothing about her health, it will go away. Which that's a quiz question, by the way. So to dig in a little further, why does it happen? We may have already answered this, because sometimes I go ahead of my slides. You know, what advances the breakdown? So why do you think joints break down? Use. My entire use. But if it's properly maintained in a line, would it still wear down? No. We'll look at the research that backs that up. So this is not opinion. This is going to be research based. And I give you the links so you can go back and see it. So the belief is the more we use our bodies, the faster it's going to break down. So that could go to think like someone who runs marathons, their body is going to break down faster than someone who doesn't. It's not necessarily what we see. Our bodies are meant to move. And it, what advances the breakdown 
are a lot of the things that we're going to look at as treatments for arthritis. Because if all we're doing is treating the symptom and not looking toward the cause, then the problem just keeps getting worse and worse. And if you're at home in Facebook land, thank you for joining us. The link to Zoom is there. Um, hopefully you have a different text message that has the password because I gave that out on Facebook once. That was a mistake. I won't do it again. <laughs> Somebody hacked right on in. Yeah, anyway. So what does it look like? So some common examples of osteoarthritis. So it goes to things like the knee, the spine, the hip, the hands, the foot. So this is an example of what a graphic of a normal hand would look like as opposed to one of arthritis. So you can see the joints get all jagged, they get irritated. It looks like most of you look right now, it looks not good. So I gotta re-say that. So most of you, <laughs> it was really bad. So most of you made the face like, oh, that looks terrible. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Good time. Thank you for that. <laughs> in the spine, this should be familiar to most of you. In the spine, this is also what it looks like. So in the neck, we have a normal healthy curve, that nice 45 to 60 degree curve. Okay. And the, this space says joints are nice and open. In phase one, we have what? Or law, or what do we not have in phase one? I guess. No curve. So if something's supposed to have a curve and it doesn't, what happens to it? Generous. Yeah, it's degenerate. It's going to be a lot more stress on. And then if we leave this alone, because most people in phase one have no symptoms, as you may recall, in something like 20 or 30 years, it looks like phase two. So it breaks down, the discs break down, the bones start to change shape. And may, some of you may remember, but how do you think the person feels when their bones are breaking down? Yeah, pain. For two, three, four, five days, according to the research. So if someone shows up in phase two, and all of this is arthritis, by the way. Sometimes when we share this with people in day two, I know it's a ton of information, but they are surprised at a later date when we revisit the fact they have arthritis. So if it's anything but here of normal, it's considered arthritis because the joints are breaking down. So if someone shows up and they have pain for a couple of days and it comes and goes, in our society, what do we tell them to do? Take an Advil. Yeah, Tylenol, Advil, pop a pill, move on. So it's that treating of the symptom and then ultimately give it another 10 or 15 or 20 years and we're at the point of no return. So not, not ideal. Another, so to look at the symptoms, because we know what it looks like is pain. That's a giveaway. Does anyone ever have pain in their joints? In the chiropractic offices, don't put your hand up. Maybe you're one of the few people. It happens. A dream I have is people show up to the chiropractor before the problem is there. But the fact is in our reality, excuse me right now, is most people show up because they've been a lot of other places and didn't find success. And, we hear it all the time of, this is my last ditch effort. I'm okay with that because I know we can help. Mm -hmm. And what if it was the other way around and they showed up before we're at the last ditch effort and they've tried all those other things and they didn't work for them? We'd be in a way better place. So pain, stiffness, swelling, maybe you look like that pumpkin. <laughs> I, I lost the other picture of the pumpkin I had, but one is like a fresh jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> and the other is, I just, I love this picture. I use this even when it's not in Halloween, <laughs> right? So like, it's so cute. Like how many of the people in our lives who maybe are been here a little longer, they're like, oh, they're just a cute little old dude or whatever, right? Because we believe that as we get older, we're going to look like the fun of the old man in your eye. <laughs> but we believe that we're just going to kind of break down. But we, I mean, the internet's this amazing thing if you properly use it. But and we can find videos of like 90 year old, I just saw one the other day, it was like a 90 year old fitness instructor who's like running circles around the 20 and 30 year olds. So if we really use our body and, and heal our body the way it was designed to, we could be that 90 year old person running circles around basically the rest of us right now, no offense to anybody. But it doesn't mean just because we're old that we have to be broken down or older. So the limitation of matter, these are a couple of chiropractic principles to visit really quick. So limitation of matter basically means if your body has broken down to a certain point, then it can never be back to 100%. It's like if someone shows up for a knee specialist and they're bone on bone in their knee, you could do all the adjustments and all the supplements on the planet the fact is they've spent decades letting that knee break down. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get it back to 100%. Can you get improvement? Sure. If we go back to the um, spine one and the neck, you may remember phase one is totally fixable in about five or six months. Phase two is two to three years of work to get maybe 60, 70, 
of recovery. And phase three is, well, there's no fixing. Sure, you're gonna feel better a heck of a lot before that. But the reason we speak of things like lifetime care in this office is we know the fact is we all have to care for our lives. Mm -hmm. The only option is how you do it. We're all gonna choose lifetime care. But if we live, choose lifetime care for our teeth about brushing and flossing and using proper mouthwash and things, we're much more likely to be the pumpkin with teeth, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Than the other version. But if we don't choose proper lifetime care for our teeth, then we're not gonna have our teeth. Mm -hmm. The difference between your spine and your teeth is, which one can you get new of? You get new teeth. Your teeth, no new spine. So one of my hopes and prayers for everyone when they walk in is the things you learn to do here, you do for the rest of your life. And ideally, as we'll see in the research, that you will also choose to get your spine checked on some version of regularity for the rest of your life. It's just like your teeth. You have to care for them. You have to care for your spine if you want to get to that, be like that 90-year-old lady who could probably run circles around most of us, right? So the principle of time is that every pro so let me back up. Sometimes I go just quick. Does the limitation of matter kind of make sense to everybody? Cool. Yeah. Principle of time is every process in life requires time. Healing is no exception. So when I went over the estimated timelines of what it takes to recover, I saw a couple of people go, oh boy, right? And that's okay. But the principle of time is if it took decades to break down, remember phase two was when with the disc breakdown, the joints begin to change shape, the symptoms for maybe a week. Phase two in the research, it took 20 to 30 years to get that way. Do you remember what I stated based on the research is how many years it takes to get like 80% recovery? Mm -hmm. Two to three. And 80% is about as much as we're ever gonna get for that person because there's ligament and cartilage damage that can't be fixed. And that's still way better than the greatest thing that our other healthcare providers offer because the greatest solution they have is seeking a 50% recovery of symptoms and that's it. And one of the classes we talked two weeks ago at one of the seminars, they talked about, I, I did a class on um, what the success rate of surgery means. I forgot. I, heard the, I, heard I, the know. I was like, so if you hear surgery as a 70% success rate, what is, what do you think that means? Back surgery, let me clear that up. So spinal surgery has a 70% success rate. That's pretty good. 30% so 30% is failure, but 70% is success. Well, what the heck is the definition of success? This is one to take and share with your friends. Success is they didn't mess it up bad enough to go back and do it again. <laughs> success based on the research of how it's written, and that's with my little spin, so I guess I do judge some things. Uh, <laughs> success is literally, it means they didn't have to go back and do another surgery, that's success. Nothing to do with symptoms. If they made them so 20 to 28 percent are straight up failures where they had to go back and do it again or they made the person significantly worse than they had to do another surgery mm -hmm. but the best that's offered by the spinal specialist which i'll do this version of it because i think it's really good marketing of the spinal specialist when it gets to the point of potential surgery is a 70 percent success rate of we didn't have to go back and do another surgery that's terrible and the hope and goal is that maximum they're shooting for you to get 50 percent symptom improvement that's pretty terrible too. This is not my opinion. This is purely the research of how our healthcare system is, healthcare system is set up. Mm -hmm. So do you think if people knew that going in and knew what they meant by success, that they'd be readily jumping on the opportunity to do that? In another study, they showed that the, um, another, another study they used the word sham is that spinal surgeries and those kind of things are no better than sham. So sham, the technical term for sham is placebo. So they didn't actually do anything. The person thought they had a spinal surgery and they had the same result three to five years later or the same result immediately after than the person who did have the surgery. Well, that's not really that good. Now there are doctors who share things like that. One of my uh, friends and colleagues, I've, I've told all of you guys multiple times, just get on Facebook or Instagram, follow Six Minutes of Science, Dr. Jen DePice. She's been, she now has a following of multiple nations and continents around the planet, and she just reviews the science of the day. She doesn't tell you what to think about it, she just reviews it. But, um, and I know she's okay with me sharing this, uh, she was to the point of seeing a neurologic specialist that she'd never seen before. They talked about doing surgery, and the doc said, listen, we could do this, but your chance of being any different than right now is no better than if we did nothing. So she opted to not do that. What if that's how our doctors talk to us? 
like actually use what the research says. But I'm getting off topic and we got some more stuff to go over. So I'm going to get back on. But the idea is it's going to take time. It's probably going to take longer than what you would hope it would. I mean, of course, we hope we'd be instantly better. And to keep the faith essentially that your body is designed to heal itself if we give it what it needs to do that. And that, yes, it may take a little longer than going in for a surgery or a pain medication or something of that sort, but the longevity of what the rest of your life is going to be is massively different. So treatments, we've talked about the medication or surgery. Supplements, we've touched on that, like glucosamine, calcium, magnesium, all good stuff. Lifestyle changes, maybe we're going to do some yoga, some Tai Chi, we're going to get massage or muscle work, some anti-inflammatory diet. All good, well, here now, and all good potential things. We already talked about the research on the other part, right? None of which, until we get to this one, actually assesses the cause of the problem in most cases for osteoarthritis specifically. Osteoarthritis happens because the joints are not properly aligned. They get irritated and they break down. So does anybody know what, besides Dr. Sam, like, what are we doing in an adjustment? We're realigning. Right? So if we're taking a joint that's not aligned and we're realigning the joint, and if it's only breaking down because it's not aligned, what does that joint now have an opportunity to do when it is aligned? Not break down. Not break down. And maybe even heal if we do it at a high enough level of rhythm and consistency and the care plans you're on are designed for wherever you're at on that. And it's not by chance that I just one day decided that I wanted to see a new patient so many times. No, it's all backed up in the research. And this is the frequency we need to actually help that joint no longer break down if it's possible and build that joint back up back up. Better. So again, all these other things are great. Yeah, absolutely. Let's clean up the diet. We have classes on that. We used to have massage therapists. We just talked about, we're seeking the higher one. Like apparently, I don't know, we can't find them. Um, yoga, Tai Chi, all good stuff. Apparently it's not just, it's, it's across the planet. Anyway, back on track. So other treatments, and I meant to remove those for this part, but I guess I removed them and I already had the slide open back here, is we have to be proactive. If we know osteoarthritis, takes 20 or 30 years of breakdown in most cases before the first symptom shows up, then by the time we choose to do something about it, it's really too late. It doesn't mean you can't be better. Remember phase two, the research says we can get about 70, 80% recovery in most cases. That's still not 100%. And we'll do 100% of what's possible for every single person that comes in, but wouldn't it be far better to show up before the problem was there, or you had the symptom of the problem, and we were proactive as part of the reason we're a pediatric practice as well as if we can take care of our little kids, then a lot of things that show up as adults don't exist. Mm -hmm. So that's why we encourage if you have kids, no kids, we all do that, right? That you have them at least get checked. It's where Dr. Sam started with our patient appreciation day. People just need to get checked. They don't need care. They don't need to get on the table. Maybe I'm going to cause more stress and subluxations in their life. Who knows? But if you don't know what's happening in your body and you're relying on your symptoms, when we know that 10%, it's actually like 9.7, but 10% of the nerves in your body have the ability to feel pain and the rest couldn't do it if they wanted to, that's not a really wise way to go about health, unless you don't know better. But you know better, so you can help other people do that. So being proactive, we have to start making those changes today. We have to get up and move. We have to eat differently. We have to think differently. You know, our brains can be programmed for however we want to program. If we get up in the beginning of the day and we think about all the terrible things from the day before, then we're telling our brain to look at all the terrible things. If we get up in the beginning of the day and choose to be grateful for the fact that there's a roof over our heads, the sun came up, whether we can see it or not like today, you know, there's food on our table, whether it's the food you want or not, we can actually program the brain to look at things. An example of that, without going off too much track, and I'm probably not going to leave time for you again tonight, Dr. Sam, is have you ever bought a vehicle, whether it was new or new to you? Did you ever notice how all of a sudden everybody else had that car? Yes. Right. There's this little part of your brain in the back called your reticular activating system. It's this amazing thing that basically your brain now filters out the reality that you're seeking, which also means we could miss out on some stuff. It's not that everybody went and bought the car that day. I promise you that. You just noticed it because your reticular activating system went, ooh, you value that thing because you bought it, so now I'm going to look for it. So the reason I have this on here, Cancer Treatment Centers of America, um, is they actually all have chiropractors on staff as a part of the treatment that's available to those who are dealing with cancer. So it's way bigger than our back pain. 
And if that's what got what got you here, or helped you show up to do something different, awesome. I love that you're here and we're taking a proactive approach. But if we're looking at people who are challenged with a very significant disease of cancer, and one of the options that one of the highest success rate, success means different compared to surgery for that, by the way, success rate related to cancer is they, they overcome the cancer. Mm -hmm. They all have chiropractors on staff. Maybe we should think about that for how our health works. We don't have time to dig into that tonight. We'll do it in another workshop, but just to plant a seed to ideally leave, when you leave go, I wanna know more about the next one. Because if we're not hungry for knowledge, then all the adjustments on the planet aren't gonna help you be as healthy as you could be. Hey, so so I, I just erased something. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. So here's the research I promised we would go into. So CBP is chiropractic biophysics. So we're just going to kind of jump through this really quick. So it's one of the techniques that we follow of retraining the curves. So what this particular one we're going to start with is a cervical curve that has improved over 12 week corrective care will stay within one degree of correction as long as they do their homework and get checked at least once a month. So the neck curve. Right? So that picture that we looked at of the x-rays. So you look at that and go, oh, maybe I should get checked once a month. Oh, then we'll go to the next one. So joints become restricted in terms of motion between the joints, uh, start to have waste products accumulate in the joints, so they're starting to break down, and they become irreversible cartilage and soft tissue damage within two weeks. Well, this research says, well, I should get checked once a month to maintain. This one says I should, if I wait two weeks, there's damage that's never going to be reversed. So what I'm building to on the slide, if you haven't already gone forward, is these are the options of lifetime care. I mean, you could choose to do absolutely nothing, of course. But some people, they get checked once or twice a month. Some people choose to get checked twice a week. And this is once we're through the initial stage of correcting what we correct. And then this other one from Gillette et al. says, research of soft tissue healing and irritation or irritated and or injured joints, uh, laying down new, so putting new stuff there, healing of second intention or low grade scar tissue is just the terms they use, but stick with me. So we'll jump right to the end is happens within a week. So what that means based on research outside of chiropractic is wellness, if you really want that highest level of health for your body, wellness and keeping your mobility and keeping the soft tissues and this paraspinal joints and all those things working the way they should means you get checked once a week. It's not by chance that our wellness care is once a week and that the goal that we started with wherever you need to start is that the goal is that one day we help you graduate to only needing once a week care. If you want something outside of wellness, doesn't mean we won't take care of you. And my job that you've hired us to do really is to, you came here to be inspired to learn. I mean, you came here to be out of pain, but we told you from day one, you're here for this, we're here to help elevate your health. So if we're not constantly having conversations about this, when we have a world that's constantly berating us with the idea that just covering up the supplement and using, or covering up the symptom and using a man-made things to alter the chemistry of the body, we'll call it, is a good idea. Well, just look at the health of the United States compared to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not a good idea. We're like 49 in the, in the world, and we spend like two and a half times more than everybody else in our healthcare. Clearly, if, it was, if we just needed to spend more money, we would be number one. It's because we're, I believe we're seeking the wrong approach. We're not, I, not overall being proactive, we're being reactive. So when it comes to the reversal of arthritis, the answer is 100% yes, if you put in the work. So this is an x-ray, uh, obviously, of a low back. And we can tell that as we move down to the disc that that one doesn't look quite right. Probably doesn't feel so good either, right? Like, so what's, I mean, what's looks different like between those two? What'd you say? So it looks like what? Looks like it. It's not yours. It's not yours. <laughs> you had digital x-rays. These are old. Some, this is somebody who's been getting adjusted for a long time. So obviously not a good idea, right? So then the same person with a intensive plan that was a little bit more intense than most of you are on over the course of 18 months that looked like that. So it's different. Ah. So, I mean, let's just talk about what we think it feels like. That's 6.30. <laughs> so let's just talk about, I mean, how do you think this person feels? A lot better. Probably sore every day. Yeah, not good. Not good. Probably a heck of a lot better. Yeah. This is me. So when I share things with you like, I know it can be better, it's the same things that were done for me with the doctors here to go from this, which this joint has a whole bunch of other stuff going wrong with it. But besides the fact it's broken down and it's moving backwards, 
to being almost back to perfect health. It's never going to be perfect. I have had periods of my life where I dealt with really terrible back pain every single day shooting down my legs and I just kind of soldiered along and nobody really knew it. But it didn't change that I knew the right thing to do was not medicate the pain away. Mm -hmm. It was to really utilize my body's ability to heal itself. So I went from something in my, I don't even know if I was 30 when this extra was taken, but somewhere in my early 30s, where that was pretty darn close to becoming a fused degenerative joint for the rest of my life, to a year and a half later, a very close to perfectly healthy spot. Mm -hmm. So when I'm encouraging you to do things, it is not because I want more people to show up, it's because I know what's possible for you, even if you don't know that it's possible for yourself yet. So the idea is, as I've taken an extra two minutes of your lives, is that we're the hope. Because you now have information that most of the world that we live in does not. You know that there's a possibility to choose a different path than what we're told is the primary option. And if we take it for ourselves, that's great. We can be that higher level. We can go from those two x-rays I just showed you. And the hope is remember where we started and that difference between heaven and hell as it was described. Is in one, everybody's out for themselves. They're all starving. They're all miserable. And the other, everyone is in great joy because they're helping each other out. And the hope of this community that we build together is that we focus not just on ourselves, but we focus on what we can do for others. And patient appreciation is just an example of an outreach to help people do that. If someone's coming in that you refer, great. If someone's not, great. Come and be part of the party. It's not about, our intention is never about getting more people in. It's always about getting more truth out and helping people make the choice that feels right for them. Because I know I'm not the right chiropractor for everybody. I know Dr. Sam's not the right chiropractor for everybody. I know there are some people that just my general happy demeanor would make really angry. And it would cause more com it would cause more problems. So they'd be like the pumpkins with no teeth. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we know that we're not here for everybody and not everybody's willing to do the work. And if you have people and you know people who are willing to do the work, we're here to encourage you every step of the way. So you can have results like we just looked at that. If I went to a um, traditional spine specialist with that, their, their option would have been surgery, I guarantee you. I, don't even, I didn't even need to go. I know that would have been what they would have told me to do because they've told countless patients that we took care of to do that who never had the surgery because we respected the fact that the power that made your body heals it. And one of my favorite quotes from one of the first chiropractors is you never know how far reaching something you may think, think say, or do will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. So I'm going to put the survey up at home where I would like to end the, the evening is I just simply want you guys to share the name of someone you thought, you thought about. I don't need their phone number. I definitely don't want their social security number, their address, only the first name. Because we just put out the energy that I know this person could be better if they knew what I know. Then my only ask is to share with them. So who comes to mind? It could even be someone you've shared before. Susie. Susie. How about you, Josh? John. Yeah. See, even here all day they have. <laughs> I mean, what you say? Valerie. Valerie. Oh, I, I think I saw her name somewhere. Just throw that out there. Who comes to my career? Sharon. Jenny. Jenny. Deborah. Deborah. I'm going to slow down because Dr. Sam's writing this stuff. Because <laughs> we're going to reconnect on it. Whether they do anything or not is, is okay. And we have a responsibility to connect because if they're important enough to you, they're important enough to us to follow up on. Who comes to my treatment? Juanita. Juanita. She's been here. She says she wants to come, so we just need to get her here. Come on back, Juanita. Just yeah. put her in the car and drive her over. <laughs> <laughs> Who comes to my treatment? Todd. Say, Mom, Karen. How about you, Doctor Doctor Sam? Definitely working more with my mother. Mm. She's gotten. I mean, I've, you always do your best to care for those that mm -hmm. you care about. But when really you're hard. their son, it's a little it's really bit hard to be the doctor for your parents. Mm -hmm. And we all know people who could be living a higher level of existence. So my ask is just share with them and give them the opportunity. So thank you for entertaining me for the extra four and a half minutes. I'm probably going to run out of time to put the survey up. But if you're at home, let's dig in. Let's build that community of people who you already love. And just it'd be fun to see them. It's super fun to watch people come here and not realize they, that each other came here and just the way everybody lights up when they're like, oh, I know you, Hi. right? Like, uh, right, with Miss Celeste. It was, what are you doing here? Same thing you're doing. That was, that was so fun for me. Anyway, I've taken way too much of your time. Thank you, have an excellent evening. <laughs>